Hey guys, Dan here from DanceTube.tv and today I'm checking out the exciting new raid system in Pokemon Go and I've got some really epic footage here of us raiding against a 21,000 CP Lapras. <laughs> As you can see, there were a lot of raids going on. You can see that the Lapras is set up and it says it has a four star difficulty rating. So that is the rarest raid that you can stumble across. Now over here, this is a two star raid system, but you actually have to wait for the egg to hatch. Now, this is a really fun system because you can be in a really highly populated raid section and you can wait for all the eggs to pop and then you can decide which gym you want to raid and what Pokemon you want to potentially capture after. I've picked up a raid pass and I've also purchased a premium raid pass from the store. You can now go to a gym and spin the actual photo disc on top and this will give you a gym pass every single day. Niantic have quickly changed the rules. It went from level 35 to be able to participate in a raid to level 25 and now they even have the premium passes in the store so I wonder whether anyone can even buy them. But anyway as you can see here this is me fighting against the Lapras and this is just me on my own and this is a level 4 raid which is the hardest tier of raids and I am absolutely getting destroyed. I can't even defeat this Lapras, not even close to defeating it. So when you're kind of assessing whether you want to put a raid pass into a gym, make sure you look at the little monster icon underneath them. If it has four monster icons, then that means it's a hard raid and you need to hope that you've got other people there with you. I really like how they've set out the timing for the raid. So it'll actually pop up with about two hours notice to let you know that a raid will be happening in two hours. And then when the raid is active, when the egg hatches, you have an hour to go and participate in that raid. Now you can go on your own, like I said, you can go in a private group, there's an option to set up a private group, or you can just jump in with whoever's available. Now when you're in this little section here, you can actually view the other people who are in the raid with you, you can view their statistics, you can check out your items, uh, seeing as after you get the opportunity to capture the Lapras, you can set up a group code and you can quit out as well. And then you obviously select your six fighters and you jump in. Now it was really awesome, I was set up ready to film this video and there were six other people playing against this Lapras here. Now there were a mixture of school kids, there were a mixture of older people and middle aged people as well and it was great to see Pokemon Go bringing out all of these different people again to play at the game. Now we destroyed this Lapras and it was really entertaining. It wasn't the easiest fight in the world, it took us a while to dwindle it down and you do have a little bit of time, you have an extra timer at the top there, um, but it still took us a while and I love how you can see all the other Pokemon surrounding the Lapras trying to take it down. You can see in the top left it says there are seven Pokemon right now fighting against this Lapras. We have 130 seconds to go and you can see we've already taken a significant chunk out of the health which is something that I could not do at all on my own. One thing to mention when you use a raid pass and say for example you fail and you can't take down the Lapras then putting the raid pass into that gym allows you to access it for that whole period of time for that whole hour. So after I failed the first time on my own I jumped back in and it gave me access to the raid again. So after you finish the raid and complete it you get some really cool items and these are rare items that you can only get from playing through the raids. I really love how anyone from any team can participate and we all have to work together. I noticed there's a lot of negativity in the Pokemon Go community around me anyway. There's a lot of tension. Um, so this is a really good way for all the different teams to interact together. After you've defeated the boss, you get the opportunity to win golden raspberries, rare candies. You also get fast TMs and charge TMs, which allow you to change the attack of specific Pokemon. Now all of these are really cool and something that I've used personally so far and it's really cool that I can change my Pokemon's attacks. Uh, rare candies allow me to actually tap on a Pokemon and get candies from that Pokemon. So say for example a Snorlax, I tap on a Snorlax and it will give me one Snorlax candy. So I used that and it actually allowed me to level up my Snorlax. So very cool. And the Golden Raspberry apparently gives you an even better chance to catch the Pokemon. So very cool. And then after you've beaten the raid boss, you have the opportunity to catch him or her with a Premier Ball. So you get Premier Balls depending on how it went and basically depending on the team contribution whether it was your team more so or the other two teams. After I captured that Lapras I actually get to hold on to that in my inventory. Obviously it's going to be a lot weaker than 21,000. That's insane. Imagine if that was a real thing. 
Um, but then after you hold on to that, you get all the benefits of that, and then the raid has completed. It's done on your end. You can't interact with that gym anymore until the timer ends. So I noticed some people abusing this system. If you get the gym set up in your team color, then no one can interact with it for that whole hour. So that means that you can just drop in there, leave some decent Pokemon, and then you've got a whole hour of protected time where no one can touch your Pokemon. So I believe that's a thing. I noticed I couldn't in interact with it last night and I couldn't even get into a gym when the raid was happening, so that must be something that is potentially something that we can exploit, or maybe they'll fix that in the future, um, but regardless, it's something that is present right now. After you've done all of that though, that is pretty much it. Like I said, you can't interact with the gym then for the remainder of the raid. You get a really cool animation above it with the raid completion symbol, with a smiley monster on top, then you go through, heal up all of your Pokemon, and you're ready for the next raid. Now, you can unlock one raid pass every day from finning, spinning the uh, photo disc above a gym, or potentially you can buy them from the store. When you're on the map itself, you'll see the Pokemon in the bottom right corner. If you tap on that, you will now have a raid tab, and it will tell you in the 24 hour time when the raid's about to occur and how intense the battle is. I also forgot to mention that you can have up to 20 people in a raid. Now right here I'm actually going to show you guys how the fast TM works. So if you tap on your Dragonite for example, it will forget Steel Wing and then it will learn Dragon Tail. So you can learn brand new moves for different Pokemon that you're not happy with the moveset on. And then you also have the opportunity to get the Charge TM, so then you can change the moveset to a Charge moveset. The Rare Candy, like I mentioned before, allows you to get candies for that Pokemon, and the Golden Raspberry makes it apparently much easier to catch Pokemon, so probably like a 30% chance of catching. Thank you so much for watching. I really enjoyed the raids. I really did. Thank you again, guys. Make sure to have a splendid day, and peace out.